Hello, in this video I will explain how to work with proximity sensors in Copelesim VREP. The aims are therefore to understand the programming API in Copelesim to access to the distance information provided by proximity sensors. Uh, we want to implement a, a robot control that allows us to establish uh, wheels angular velocities based on the separation distance with respect to lateral walls uh, of the environment. So for this purpose uh, we will use uh, low-cost leader sensors, in particular we will simulate the VL5310X sensor. In addition to this um, we want to adjust the speed of the robot and stop in case there's an object in front uh, of it uh, using the ultrasonic sensor which is already included in the robot. So in order to succeed we will need a set of uh, computations that I'm going to explain uh, having in mind that the ultimate goal is to set the robot's wheels velocity based on uh, the distance we get from sensors. Therefore, the first thing we will have to do is to add proximity sensors as shown in the figure. Uh, on the one hand we have the ultrasonic sensors that must be already included in our robot and this is something I explained in, uh, in the previous videos. On the other hand we have uh, to add four uh, VL5310X uh, sensors they are stuck right on the robot's arm, so as, as you can see there, two on the left, two on the right, with a separation about three centimeters, and you have to approximately uh, place them uh, in, a, in a similar situation as we show here in, uh, in this picture. Thus, uh, we will include a, an object as an imported geometry from a near steel file, uh, this is uh, a file that you can download uh, with the link that we provide in the video description. So uh, this is just simply the, um, the aspect of the sensor. But then for each object we uh, will add a ray type proximity sensor. And in this case uh, the configuration parameters for this sensor are rather quite simple. We have five centimeters offset and uh, the maximum detection distance according to the uh, uh, manufacturer is 1.2 meters. Remember that if we want the sensors uh, move uh, as the robot moves as well, then uh, they must be children of the robot. And in fact, uh, the most convenient uh, hierarchy in this case uh, uh, is uh, where the sensors uh, are children of the imported mesh, and at the same time, these objects are children of the robot arms as shown. Once you have the sensors, you must create an appropriate environment for the correct performance of this exercise. So, uh, in this environment, uh, the robot must always stay or lay between uh, two walls. So, one on the left and one on the right. So, the separation distance of the wall must be reasonable large so that the robot can move without colliding, but smaller than the maximum detection distance uh, of the sensors, obviously. Uh, we provide you with an STL file uh, with a wall geometry uh, that uh, we have created for you and you can download it uh, with the link provided in the video description too. However, we encourage you to uh, create your own walls even with simple geometry uh, such as planes or to create your own STL file uh, with any suitable uh, CD program. In order to get data from a proximity sensor we must use Lua code uh, in a, a primary script associated to the robot main object. The first thing we should do is to, uh, in, the, um, in the syscall init function is to uh, get the object handle. Here we show the case for the ultrasonic sensor, but we should do the same for the LiDAR VL5310X uh, sensors too. So we must, uh, in this case, uh, or we have defined a uh, maximum distance parameter uh, where the sensor no longer detects an object and we will use this uh, to ensure that even there's no object detected, uh, the function get distance, the one you see here, will always return a value between zero and the maximum distance. In fact, if we take a look to the get distance function, we see that uh, the sim uh, or the function sim uh, dot read proximity sensor it's called inside this function and this is indeed the Coppelia sim function that will allow us to obtain uh, or to get the sensor distance. Uh, this function actually returns two output arguments, the first one indicate if an object has been detected while the second uh, argument 
uh, returns the distance uh, to the closest uh, ob object or obstacle. Uh, so, it is important to remark that we should not use the distance value unless the detected uh, variable is equal to 1. Otherwise, the distance will return always uh, a known value, okay, and this will cause errors for the subsequent calculations. So, for these reasons, we actually, uh, this is why we are actually always uh, returning the maximum distance even when the object is not detected. So, uh, now we are going to explain how, how to proceed with, uh, with the uh, proper calculations in order to uh, regulate the speed and also, uh, of the wheels. Okay, so let's start by establishing, uh, let's say, the linear speed or the, the, the speed we want the robot to move forward. Okay, and uh, in this case, we will need to get access to, uh, to the um, wheels velocity or to set the, 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 the wheels velocity. So, this here we show you the API in order to, to, to do that. So, we again need uh, the object handle for each of the joints and then we need to call to the function set joint target velocity. In this case, we have uh, set it uh, here uh, zero, but we will, this will be changed uh, uh, based on the computations we, we, we're about to explain. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, we would like to adjust the robot's velocity. So, if there's an object uh, in front of it, okay, so the working principle here is rather quite simple. So, if the distance uh, we obtain from the ultrasonic sensor is less than the minimum value, uh, this is something we, we, can, we can easily set, then we want the robot to be uh, stopped, okay. Otherwise, we make uh, the velocity proportional to the measured distance and in this case, Vmax is the maximum speed in normal operations, that is, when there's no obstacle detected. On the other hand, uh, with the leader sensors, we uh, can estimate the angle of, uh, and distance of each of wall, the one on the left and the one on the right. Here, uh, we show some simple calculations that I'm pretty sure that you will understand, because basically it's computing uh, the angle of a line and the mean uh, distance using uh, uh, these sensors. So, once we have the angle and distance of each wall, now we need to have some kind of uh, error measure. Uh, uh, so, this error measure is something we would like to uh, minimize, okay. So, for instance, uh, we can see that a rough estimate of the heading error, that is uh, the, the uh, heading angle of the robot with respect to the environment, the walls of the environment, is a semi-sum of the angles of the walls, while the separation error is proportional to the difference between the right and left distances. In the first case, we uh, want the robot to point to the same direction as the intermediate line, the one you can see here. Uh, so, uh, we, can, uh, we can think of a third fictitious uh, wheel that will help us to point uh, to this, uh, towards this, this imaginary line, okay. In the second uh, case, I mean in the, um, in the separation error, we would like uh, to this line to pass through right uh, through the center of the robot. So, we will uh, use uh, uh, a measure in order to uh, correct this, um, this wheel angle, typically used in car-like configurations. So, uh, indeed, in order to have proper units, uh, what, what I've said before is that the separation error is proportional to the distance, and this is uh, indeed a totally arbitrary criterion, but uh, it will help to compensate the, the angle of the third wheel, and therefore requires a parameter, uh, here I, I, I use the, the letter K, that you must adjust. My suggestion is that you start with a value zero, and then you gradually increase this value to see if you observe that the behavior improves. And then, um, in order to obtain the wheel's velocity, the kinematics for this robot are, are well known, and therefore here I include the formulas that you will need to obtain the right and uh, on the left and right wheel's velocities based on this car-like configuration. As geometric parameters, you, you need the semi-distance of the wheel basis, which is the parameter B, in our robot is uh, 5.65 centimeters, and then you also need the separation distance of the third dummy wheel, 
Okay, this is the parameter E and this is something you must adjust and just take uh, into account that the larger this parameter is, the less uh, correction you will have, but the, the control will be smoother. And indeed, if you make this uh, or you set this parameter very small, this could uh, make the robot or the control uh, to be more prone to instability. Okay, so please uh, set this value properly based on, on the behavior you, you, you get. Okay, and the last of the calculations you must do before uh, applying the speed of the wheel is to convert these values into uh, radians per second and in order to do that uh, we need uh, the wheel's radio which is uh, 3 centimeters in our robot. Okay, this is something required by the Coppelia SIM API in order to set uh, the joints velocities. Well, in this video I have explained how to use proximity sensors with Coppelia SIM and I have also shown you a set of calculations that you, it will allow you to uh, move uh, the robot between walls. In the following video uh, I will show you how this is expected to work. Thank you very much.